All right, so today's video is gonna be on the basement bodybuilding home gym, how the gym got started, why I built the home gym. I wanna go over a couple things on considerations when starting home gym, if it's even something that you should be doing. And then from there, I do wanna dive into this specific gym, what the equipment that I have is, and then more importantly, why I have each piece of equipment, and then the order that I actually got things in. Because it's like, it's not like I bought this entire gym in one try. I did it in almost like phases throughout the past almost two years now, which is wild. Yeah, like year and a half, two years I've, I've had this thing for. So um, I do want to go through some phases, etc. So how I built my home gym. The first thing I want to say is that home gyms aren't for everyone. There's a few different reasons for this, but the first one that you're, that you're going to want to ask is, are you able to train alone? For I'd argue for most people, they do need a social atmosphere. And it's definitely, even if it's not something you need, having a good social atmosphere with a good community in a gym, even if you don't talk to everybody in there, just having other people around you working hard, it's a helpful thing just psychologically. And there's nothing wrong with that. The last thing I'd want to see you guys do is think you're someone that needs a home gym just because I have one. And then you try it and it just doesn't work and you wasted a bunch of money on a home gym you're never going to use. Um, what I'd say is know yourself, understand if it's something that you're actually going to do and if it's something that you're going to commit to. Because if it's not, maybe start small. Start with one or two things and see if you can use that once a week consistently or even a couple times a week consistently and then build up from there. So just know if it's something that you want to do. They definitely aren't for everybody. That's There's nothing wrong with that. So the next question you're going to want to ask if you're deciding on a home gym is do you even have the space for it? And there's a few different types of home gyms that I want to go into here. So do you have the space for it? I was fortunate enough to have a mostly empty basement to move a, a gym into. And it wasn't mostly empty at the start, but I've expanded back pretty far since I started this thing. I, I started the channel just about a year after I started the home gym. I'll probably post a picture at some point in the future. I have a picture of like each phase that the gym was in and what it looked like. It's kind of funny, kind of cool to see that whole transformation. So um, let's see. And then the next one for the home gym, another consideration. Do you have a plan for your home gym? Is this going to be something that you're doing full time where you do every single lift in your home gym? Uh, for myself, that's the case. That's why I built it out so much because I do 100% of my lifting in this gym. And it's been like that for almost two years now. Another one's going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, do you want to do like a 50-50? Do you want to have enough equipment to do a certain day on your program at home and then maybe do a little bit more at the at the public commercial gym? Or would you rather like, if you're into, I don't know, like if, if you're a power lifter and you want fancy equipment to have at home and then you can go to the gym to have access to like a full dumbbell rack, cables, machines, etc. So there's certain considerations where you can do part of your workout at home and part of it at the gym, or one or two days, maybe a couple lighter days at home, and then do the bulk of your work at the actual gym. That's another consideration. There's a few different ways to do it, and there's, there's no one best way. It's just what's best for you. The next thing you're going to want to decide if you do go through the home gym is where you're going to put it. So there's a few different ways to actually build out a home gym. Some people have them in garages, and some people have them in basements. I think garages are slightly more popular. I prefer basements and not just because I have one. I didn't actually make that choice because I just don't have a garage. I built it down here. But after making that decision, I realized that this was the right decision all along. So the biggest thing for me, the pros of the basement, the, it's primarily the heating. And I live way up north where it's just ridiculously cold. That's why I wear a flannel every time. I have a wood stove about six feet behind the camera. It heats the thing up very well. And I, I, I wouldn't want to be in a garage in these months in this time of the year. That's for sure. I love, to, I love to be warm. I like to be sweating when I'm working out. I don't want to be like drenched in sweat and disgusting, but I like to, I like to be warm. I like to get a pump. That's something that I value a lot. And I actually hate working out in most public gyms because they have the AC on and it drives me crazy because you just, you're chilly and you can't get a pump little nitpicky, but just me. Another thing with basements, a pro to this is you, you have a ton of space. And that's definitely important, especially if you're someone like myself that loves to have machines, cable towers, and just 
a bunch of stuff. Most people that have home gyms do go really high end on the squat rack and just kind of build out from there, but keep it mostly revolved around high quality stuff that works with a power rack. So they get high quality plates, barbells, and a solid power rack that will last them forever. I decided to go a little bit less fancy with the power rack, but put all of my money and space elsewhere into more machines and whatnot. And I think another, an overlooked pro of uh, basement is the flat floor. It keeps it very simple. So in garages, at least a lot of the times that they're built, they're designed to pour water out, especially in the winter. So there's even certain cases where if your garage doesn't have that, if your garage is flat on the ground, what ends up happening sometimes is it seems like a good thing because you don't have to worry about evening things out, but water can actually seep in, especially if you live somewhere where there's a lot of snow like where I live and the water will seep in and now half of your garage floor is ice anyways. So I think it's, it, it's tough either way is what I'm trying to say with basements. You just don't have to worry about that. It's just a flat floor. And then for garages, if you do have a garage, that's great. If you're willing to give it up for a home gym, or if you have a two, car, two or three car garage that helps a ton, you can just use one of the bays for uh, the home gym. The pro here, and I think the biggest pro in my opinion is gonna be the high ceilings. So that's the, the biggest downside to the basement is that the ceilings are low. So I can't actually do a standing overhead press. I can barely do a standing overhead extension and like just barely, like I, my hands actually just about touch the ceiling at the lockout, but luckily the lockout's not that big of a deal. So most of that stuff I do have to do seated. That's definitely a consideration. For garages, high ceilings, that's going to be key. You also have lots of space and obviously basement and garage sizes vary a ton. So this is obviously dependent on the actual house that you have. And then another pro to the garage is that you're not taking up heated square foot space in your house. So if you actually want to use your basement for storage or finish your basement instead, you don't have to worry about a giant gym taking up part of your living space. And if you don't use your garage or you don't care about your garage or you have an extra bay, that's another pro to use your garage for the gym. <clears throat> so well, another con to the garage is going to be the heating situation. It's, it's tricky unless you have a heater that you put in your garage. It's a little bit trickier. Heating up your basement's real easy. Let's see. So all that aside, let's get into the juicy stuff, the fun part. So the equipment that I've bought, this is going to be in chronological order and why I actually got each piece of equipment. So the first thing that I did, I already had a couple of things from basically like the COVID time and whatnot. That is a huge spider. I swear every time I sit down to film, this is like two or three videos in a row, just a spider interrupts me for no reason. So... <laughs> I'm going to start off with phase one of building out the home gym. The first equipment that I got, uh, the first thing I actually bought was a 300 pound barbell set. I got this for, it was like 300 bucks. And I don't know how I got such a good deal on that because weight is way more expensive these days, but it was basically like the cheapest that you could get that is still of decent quality. So it's actually the weeder set. It was 300 or 330 or something like that for 300 pounds. It's a barbell with a pair of everything. And I think it came with four, five pounds and that equals 300 pounds. That's the first thing I got. And the reason I got that is it just instantly gives you a decent amount of variety. So if I was to go in and get something specific like a lat pull down or a machine, there's just not a whole ton of versatility. So the first thing that I wanted was some versatility. Did I know a barbell was gonna do everything that I needed? Of course, it's not going to do everything I needed, and that's why I built the gym out. But at, at least I can start off doing a decent amount of work and hit most muscle groups with that barbell set. After that, I got cheap, just 20-pound adjustable dumbbells. They're the spin lock kind. You can get them on at Walmart for like 40 bucks or something. Just covers your arm and shoulder training. You can do a decent amount of isolation work with those. And they're dirt cheap, don't take up much space. And you can, you don't have to order them. You can actually just go to Walmart and buy them. Usually they're in stock. Uh, the next thing I bought was an Olympic bench. So this was, this served the purpose of obviously being an actual bench, but it was also a rack that I could use for any other lift. So I didn't always have to keep the bar on the floor. That made it a little bit easy. And at this point, I can do certain bench variations. I could do JM press, skull crushers, and I could even use the bench for other seated lifts. So I could do like a seated military press. I could do seated curls, stuff like that. So 
gave me a decent amount of variety. I could do pullovers using the bench, stuff like that. There's brings in a lot of versatility too. The next thing I got was a rogue monster band that was about 30 pounds. Again, another variation for some more arm training. So you can do push downs, you can do uh, bicep curls with them, and you can do face pulls. Those are the three primary things I'd use for use with the band. Those are also dirt cheap and don't take up much space. You can get them on Rogue for anywhere from like seven to 20 bucks. Bands are a great option when you're first starting home gym. And then I had uh, an adjustable flat incline decline bench. This is a super shitty one that I actually got for free off the side of the road when I was like 18 or something. I just happened to see it and picked it up and it fit in my car at the time. So grabbed that. Uh, and obviously that, that helped a decent amount, but it wasn't the best. So I, I didn't really trust it for anything heavy. And that's phase one that covered most of the stuff that I needed. I don't think it was enough for me. Like I could barely even train legs. I could do split squats and stuff like that. But at, once you get past that, it's hard to actually, like, I couldn't do a plat squat because how would I get the bar on my back? It's stuff like that where you start to run into issues. So you do have to upgrade a little bit from there. The next phase that I got uh, was a set of Olympic dumbbells. And if you don't know what an Olympic dumbbell is, it's just like a mini barbell that fits in your hand. And then it has Olympic size uh, collar sleeves that actually are on the end. So you can use the same plates that you have and you don't need to buy the one inch standard plates. So with these, they're 20 inches. You can load them up. Realistically, you can go up to 100, maybe 125 with those. So it instantly gives you a whole ton of versatility rows, dumbbell presses, military press, curls, skull crushers, all that kind of stuff is now introduced into your training because you're past that 20 pound adjustable dumbbell on the spin locks plateau. So it adds a whole ton of versatility. The Olympic dumbbells are a great upgrade and I got mine from Titan Fitness. They're a hundred bucks for a pair of them. They're super high quality. I've had them basically since I opened, not, not opened the gym. It's my own gym <laughs> since I built this basement gym. They're probably the most underrated piece of equipment that I've ever seen. They're a hundred bucks. Like Rogue sells them and I'm sure Rogues are way better, but I think it's almost 200 bucks for one pair. It's like 150 or something for, not for one pair, for one handle. A pair is going to cost you 300. So if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper and a little bit quicker, that's definitely a good option for you. Next one that I got was more plates for those dumbbells. So obviously you need two dumbbells instead of just one barbell. So you do have to buy more plates to go with it. That's the only con, but it's definitely worth it. And you're gonna need to buy more plates at some point anyways, if, especially if you get another bar and an easy bar and you start doing super sets of giant sets, you just need that stuff too. Next thing I got was a super shitty cap easy curl bar. It was like 45 bucks or something off of Amazon. I actually still have it and I still use it when I do reverse curls and stuff like that. It's terrible quality, like it, it's really bad, but if you need something to get by and you need something cheap and you're just gonna use it every now and then for lighter curls and stuff, it's not a bad option. After that, I got a plate tree, simply for storage. I think I got it for like 30 bucks at Walmart. It's just a standard one where they have the one inch pins, but uh, holds all my, sm all my small plates, just keeps it out of the way and keeps the gym a lot cleaner and more organized. Next thing I got was a wrist roller. I also got this from Walmart. I went there and just got a couple of these super cheap little things that are little upgrades. So the wrist roller, super easy forearm training, a uh, little bit more variety. And it, it was like, I don't know, 10 or 15 bucks or something. And then I also went to Home Depot and got these, um, I think they're four square foot each foam tiles. They're not good at all. Like if you drop a barbell or dumbbell on them, it will leave an indent and it doesn't even have to be heavy. They're good for like, super light stuff or if you're just going to stand on them and do curls and whatnot like it's fine as flooring but it shouldn't be for gym use i have half of my gym in this flooring right now but for anything where i'm actually lifting a little bit heavier it's all like my power rack and whatnot it's all on horse stall mats which i'll touch on later uh that's it for phase two phase three this is where the gym really starts to upgrade and i get a ton of variety and the, the reason for that is actually the first addition i got in this next phase which is a, it's a standalone cable tower that's fully adjustable. And with this, you can do so many different types of lifts because it's, it's a fully adjustable cable. So you can pull from any height and there's resistance either way. You can basically do any cable lift. So that is another super underrated piece of equipment. 
I want to say they're going for like 230 on Titan Fitness. It's not the best quality, but it's good enough. I've had it for over a year and I use it all the time and it's holding up just fine. I would probably recommend if you want this for long term, I'd probably recommend going with something that's a little bit more expensive, a little bit higher quality and that you can keep for longer. I'll probably do that at some point, but this thing's holding up just fine. The next thing I got was a squat stand. So it was like a basically a half rack or squat stand, whatever you want to call it. It had little spotter arms that came out and then a rack that you could put the bar at squat height on top of. So that allowed me to do squats, plat squats, split squats, stuff like that. And it was also good for military press too. So any anything where you need to have the bar set at a rack that's higher than an Olympic bench, obviously it does a good job of that. The next one that I got is a lat pull down. I got a steel on one of these. It's nothing fancy and it's nothing special. The quality's not that great, but it, it's a lat pull down. It does what it needs to do. So the reason why I got this one was because I have low ceilings down here. So this is the first one I found that actually fit in my decently low ceiling. So I got that and I, I love lat pull down to do them all the time. So that, that was an easy one for me. And then the next thing that I got was a dip station, also from Titan Fitness. They're going for, I want to say 60 bucks now. I got this as a temporary solution. It almost looks like a walker, but I've had it for a year and a half, a year, year and a half or whatever. And I do dips. I've done dips literally at least once a week, every single week for that year, year and a half. And it's holding up just fine. So I got that as like a, a quick buy. I was like, all right, let's buy it for 50 bucks and then sell it and get something a little bit better. But it's actually held up just fine. And then it's super lightweight, so I can actually move it around and get it out of the way if I need to. It's super easy. So I'd highly recommend that. You can do dips. Yeah, it's 50 bucks. I mean, I don't know why you'd pass up on that. So that's it for phase three. Phase four, this is where the gym started to become like a lot more legit. This is when I did the expansion and moved all my stuff, not all my stuff, but all the new stuff, put it kind of back here in the second half of the gym. So the first piece of uh, equipment that I got. And this is where I got into more machines. Uh, I got a machine row. It's a plate loaded machine row. This thing gives you a ton of versatility because it's chest supported. And the nice thing about that is you can add in a ton of upper back volume without adding any uh, taxing or volume to your lower back. So you can recover and still actually be able to hit your upper back. This is the biggest downside to most home gyms that just have power racks. Besides inverted rows and pull-ups, it's really hard to get like heavy, high quality upper back volume. And I think the machine row is just an excellent way to get that work in. It's, it's well worth the buy. And it's actually not something that I really considered until I saw this machine on Facebook Marketplace a year or so ago. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, it's actually genius. Let me just put that. I have it in the back corner uh, over here right now. And it works perfect. Like I use it three times a week. It's a great piece of machinery. And I've gotten hundreds of extra sets in for my upper back with nothing, no work going to my lower back. So I can recover and just get all that more work in. The next thing I got was a hack squat machine. You can see it right behind the power rack. It's technically like an inverted leg press. I just call it a hack squat because it resembles a hack squat a little bit more, but your torso is bent. Uh, the weight is loaded on your lower back. It doesn't put pressure on your lower back because it's not on your upper back and you're using your lower back for support. The weight's just on your hips and on your lower back. So it's basically loaded like a leg press. The mechanics are pretty similar to a leg press. That thing is super legit. It's a, it's a power tech machine. I've had no issues with it and I've bought it. I bought it secondhand off of Facebook marketplace, got a good deal on it. That thing has been in my program at least once a week since I bought it, probably about a year ago. After that, next thing I got was a uh, plate-loaded machine bench, and it's fully adjustable too. This thing that I'm actually sitting on right here that I sit on for each video does a few different heights on bench. You can do military press, uh, incline bench, decline bench, and obviously flat bench too. Um, great piece of equipment. Got a good deal on this. Got it used on the marketplace. And now that I have those few machines, it's added a ton of variation to my training and it just keeps it fun. It keeps it fresh. I can change things up when I need to physically or when I just feel like changing things up mentally. And for me, that's the biggest thing to making working out from home more sustainable long-term. That's helped a ton. 
when I also bought these machines, I'll touch on this again, I bought stall mats. I think they're about 60 bucks per for a four by six, somewhere around that. I mean, with inflation and whatnot, they're probably 80 bucks or something now, but they're well worth it. I mean, they're, they're, they're a hundred pounds each. They're three quarters inch thick and they're four by six. So that's 24 square feet. They're literally a hundred pounds each. They're brutally heavy, super high quality. They will literally last you forever. Unlike these foam tiles. So stuff like that, there's certain things you should invest in. There's some stuff you can get. That'll just hold you over for as long as you need it to. That's pretty cheap. Up next, we've got phase five. First one I got here was the leg extension and ham curl combo. Not a high quality machine, but it's a, it's a single joint machine. So you don't need it to be that high of quality. You just need tension on that plane of movement. So leg extension and ham, ham curls. I'm not the biggest fan of these machines in, in the home gym sense because they're plate loaded. So the strength curve is super awkward on leg extensions. It basically biases that contracted position a whole ton. And in reality, the the length and position is going to be a little bit more beneficial to have more tension on it's a little bit nitpicky but i i think it is like i think long term that probably would make a difference in terms of results i know it sounds super nitpicky but it, that's that's kind of my belief but obviously with every con there's going to be a pro and for the hamstring curls the issue is the opposite so it actually is a, it's a pro it's really good for hamstring curls uh leg extensions Plate load is just not, not quite as good, depending on the engineering of the actual machine. But most home gym leg, extension, leg extensions I see, not quite as good as the uh, cables. So up next after that, I actually sold that Olympic flat bench and I sold my squat stand and bought this power rack behind me. I didn't even know they made power racks that are short enough to fit into my basement. And then I found one. Um, again, it's from Titan Fitness. I get most of my stuff from them. The shipping's free. I know people have had issues with them in the past, but they've changed a bunch of stuff within their company. I've never had an issue with anything from them. Everything's shipped perfectly fine. It's all high enough quality. It's all good stuff. Um, and it, it's free shipping too. So it's like, it's just hard to pass that up. It makes it easy to, yeah, not have to worry about paying for shipping and whatnot. So yeah, I support it. I like Titan Fitness. Up next, uh, with that, I got the multi-grip pull-up bar. So a bunch of different grips. I know you probably can't see it with the black ceilings, but a um, few different grips, a bunch of different neutral, pronated, supinated, and any, anywhere in between the 45 degree angles. Uh, within that, that's pretty helpful. I love doing pull-ups, so that helps a ton. I also got a pack of the knockoff mag grips for the lat pull-downs and the cable rows. I got the rep adjustable bench, which I don't think you guys have ever seen because I just use it as a, a stand for my computer down here. This thing, it's another piece of equipment that I invested in. It's, it's a little fancier, but it will be something that I have forever. And I don't have to worry about it like breaking or snapping like certain low quality home gym benches do. So I can load a bunch of weight on this, not have to worry about anything. And it looks awesome too. It's super cool, super high quality. Love it. I also got uh, this one, <laughs> this isn't really gym equipment, but these LED lights, like 25 bucks on Amazon, super cheap. So just got those. Um, I love working out in the LED lighting. I, it's tough to film like that. So usually I put the big light on above me, but the LED is cool vibe for working out. I'd say last phase, of the home gym phase six, the first thing I got here is these lever arms so you'll see that it looks like there's six posts on the rack these two that are kind of leaning out on the end are actually lever arms it's basically like it's like a, a lunge slash deadlift machine that's attached to the rack and you can adjust the height of these two so you can put them up high and you can do viking press or military press on them there's a bunch of different things you can do i primarily got them so i can do power shrugs and they are excellent for power shrugs like like my favorite lift I've ever done is a machine power shrug and they blew my traps up like crazy. So I did want to have a way to do those in the home gym. I do like to do them on barbells too, but I don't think they're comparable. I think this is a situation where the machine is just miles better than the free weight up next in this phase. I also got safety straps. I primarily got those safety straps for rack pulls. Mrs. Basement is sleeping when I lift. So 
I can't do rack pulls or anything or power shrugs with the barbell with the metal safety pins because it's brutally loud and she's sleeping above me. So those keep it quiet. It's, all, it's a squat rack silencer. That's essentially what it is. They also look cool. Another thing I got in phase six is going to be the Rogue OSO collars. These are, I don't want to say they're overkill, but I think the, the thing that makes these worth it, in my opinion, they are expensive. I think they're 60 or 70 bucks a pair. I got two pairs for the dumbbells. The biggest thing for me here is one, they're going to last forever. And I don't, I, I prefer to buy things that are going to last forever. I'd rather pay more and just actually not have to worry about it after that. But I, th I think another big thing is going to be safety. When you're using Olympic dumbbells, you want high quality colors because when you're using a barbell, it's not as big of a deal. It's still dangerous, but the barbell, it doesn't sway as much. When you're doing lifts with dumbbells, they're going to be tilting in and out. Say you're doing a military press with dumbbells or even a dumbbell bench or anything, dumbbells aren't going to stay flat throughout the lift like a barbell. So of course, there's still a risk with a barbell and you want high quality collars, but it's going to be more important for dumbbells especially when you're lifting stuff over your face, over your chest and over your head, you don't want those falling down and hitting yourself in the face. Like that is the last thing you want to happen. Keep it sturdy, keep it safe, spend 120 bucks and just don't worry about it ever again. They'll last you forever. They're also really satisfying to put on because they have that really solid clip. They legit do not budge. Like I've dropped weights, tilted weights, thrown them down on the ground multiple sets in a row they do not budge highly recommend rogue makes obviously really good stuff and then phase nope not yet another thing i got was a monster band i want to say it's the 60 or 80 pound band this is just for accommodating resistance on that hack squat leg press machine makes it so i don't have to buy more plates yet. I have this really weird thing where I, I hate to buy plates because I've seen the price go up three times what it should be. So I just, it doesn't feel ethical to be buying weights right now. I'll buy anything else, but <laughs> for like plates, I feel super weird about it. So I was like, you know what? I'll just buy an 80 pound band for like 15 bucks off of Rogue and just strap that around the leg press. And there we go. There's an extra 60 pounds or whatever. So that's it for phase six. I have one last phase. This is phase seven, and this is gonna be the future stuff that I plan to get pretty soon. The first thing that I'd like to get that's a bigger piece of equipment is gonna be a safety squat bar. I wouldn't say this is necessary. This is more of a luxury, and that's why I've waited so long to get it. You can do heel elevated squats. You, you can do plat squats, and that kind of replicates what an SSB would do for you. But SSB is obviously, it's very easy. You don't have to worry about any crazy setups. You can still use a heel elevation or a squat wedge and it will be that much better. But I view that as a little bit more of a luxury. Most SSBs are gonna be three to 400 bucks. And that's something that it's definitely a bigger investment for just a bar, but I do think it's worth it. It's something that I plan on getting in the future. It is more of a luxury than a necessity though. So if, like, I wouldn't say that's the first thing you should get, but if you have extra money or you want to just buy something else, it, it's a decent luxury to have, but by no means is it necessary. And to kind of go along with that, I would say a squat wedge. This is another thing where it's not necessary, and they, I do think they're overpriced. They're like 100 bucks when they're, they probably shouldn't be 100 bucks. So I've just been standing on little plates. But another thing where it just makes your lifting easier, makes the wedge more consistent, and it will probably last you forever. Like, I don't see how those would break. But yeah, it's like 100 bucks. So I wouldn't... It's one of those things where if you have the extra money and you just really want it, then go for it. But I wouldn't say it's a necessity. And that's why I don't have it yet, because I don't need it. Another thing would be more 10-pound plates for my Olympic dumbbells. This is probably something that I should be buying, and I probably should have bought a long time ago, because I'm still somewhat limited by the plates that I have for the dumbbells that I bought. Um, but again, I feel weird about buying plates. I just buy them slowly over time. So 10-pound plates... That's probably the best size for those Olympic dumbbells. I've been using 25s, but they're super clunky. It just makes it a little bit tricky to get a full range of motion on certain lifts, especially lifts where you're pressing above your chest or above your shoulders. Those things around your head and your shoulders, you start to run out of space. So getting more compact plates and just putting more of them on makes a little bit more sense of them. If you have experience with these dumbbells, you'll notice that. And the last thing for phase seven is just gonna be an upgrade of the actual easy bar. Bells of Steel makes one. Uh, I can't remember what it's called specifically, but it looks super high quality. 
it's not as expensive as Rogue. I want to say it's about 150 bucks or something, but that's a, that's a bar that will last me forever. It's a high quality company, high quality bar. So that's probably the next thing I'll get. We'll see. Either way, I hope you guys learned a couple things and ask questions in the comments. I love to talk about home gyms and that kind of stuff. Obviously, I have one, so I'm into it. And I'd be happy to give you recommendations, whether it's a company or piece of equipment or just what you should actually use your home gym for or if you should even make one. So with that being said, that's it for today. I'll see you guys soon.